Tuning a carburetor has lots of challenges, but one factor that isn't always understood is how elevation has a big effect on how the engine operates. So today we're going to take a look how to account for those elevation changes and how to tune for it. Now there are a lot of factors that come into play when tuning a carburetor, but like I said, one thing that I think gets overlooked is elevation. The higher you go in elevation, the denser the fuel, the air is, and the less oxygen that's up at those higher elevations. Now when I say higher elevations, typically it's anything 3,000 foot and above. That's when you really need to start looking at making some changes to how you tune the carburetor because they don't need as much fuel. You're going to lean the carburetor out the higher you go in elevation. Now a typical rule of thumb for the Edelbrock carburetor is you'll go 2% lean for every 1,500 foot of elevation. Edelbrock list that very specifically in their tuning guide to help you remember how to tune that and the tuning chart is very very easy in that we'll look at that in just a quick second here when we start talking about specifics but there's a lot of other factors that go into that the one we talk about quite a bit that gets totally I think forgotten about when talking about tuning a carburetor is ignition timing when you're at a higher elevation you need to go a little bit higher or a little bit more advanced on the ignition timing. So I'll give an example because we're gonna talk about Denver here in just a quick minute and the elevation that it's at. Denver's at 5280, I think is their official uh, elevation number or close to that. And at that level, if you are at sea level and you are 14 degrees of initial timing, you need to add about four more degrees of timing to it so you can start the burning event a little bit sooner. So 18 degrees is where you need to be at. And those two go hand in hand. We Again, we've talked about that quite a bit in the past and it gets overlooked, especially when when I get questions on how to tune and I ask what the timing is, one of the first responses is always, well, I don't know, or I don't know it's set by somebody else. It's part of it. The two go hand in hand. You'll always tune timing and carburation together. So again, four degrees is about a rough estimate of that. But we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a quick second. So timing is always a big part of tuning that carburetor and at elevation or the higher you go in elevation the more critical it gets. We've talked about different types of fuel. If you're running a pump gas that's E10 uh, you're, you don't need to really account for much of anything there. But now we're going to talk specifically about a couple of different instances here because I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. One here recently, a good friend of mine that lives in Denver had told me that he had traveled recently to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe is south by a couple hundred miles. I don't know the exact distance, but Santa Fe is a much higher elevation than Denver. Denver is at 5280. Uh, Santa Fe, I think, is right at 7200. Now, when you drive from that elevation, up to a higher elevation, you're going to have to continue to tune the carburetor. Now he was there in Santa Fe for three days for a car show. He said the car ran horrible the entire time, which I can expect that it probably would. And if you're going to be there for a length of time, it may be a good idea to pop the top and do a little bit of uh, tuning on that carburetor when you get ready to head back home and you're going down in elevation, down to where Denver's at at that 5280. Then you can reset the timing in the jets and the carburetor, or rods, metering rods, whatever type of carburetor you're tuning to get to where you need to be. Now also just something really quick to keep in mind that about every thousand foot of elevation that you go up, your go engine is going to lose about three horsepower. That's at least scientifically what the experts say. I don't know how accurate that is. I would imagine that it also depends on what type of of the fuel delivery you've got on the vehicle. If it's fuel injected, I think that number could be a lot less. If it's carbureted, it could be a little bit more. Carburetors are terribly inefficient, especially at that elevation, you're going to lose horsepower. But it's just something to take in, into consideration here that when you get up to that level and let's say you're, you've tuned for down at sea level and you've gone up to 6,000 foot of elevation, you could lose 10 to 20 percent of your horsepower rating depending on what kind of engine it is so don't always blame the carburetor for the lack of performance it could be there's just not enough air 
in the air or oxygen in the air for it to burn. So just something to take it take it into consideration here when you get up to those elevations to not freak out about a little bit loss of power. So now we're going to talk specifically about how to tune on the Edelbrock. We could talk about the Holly as well too. It's a it's a pretty much the same. You're just changing uh, jets in that carburetor uh, to account for it. If you've got a power valve, you made or excuse me, uh, uh, second vacuum secondaries like this carburetor is, you may need to change the spring to bring in the the uh, secondary is a little bit slower. Uh, it's just part of the tuning process. But we're going to talk specifically about the Edelbrock one because they give us a very, very good tuning chart that we've talked about quite a few times on the channel. And I'm going to show you that because it's very, very easy in how it's laid out. So let's take a look at that. Now this is one thing I've always loved about the Edelbrock carburetor is they give you these very nice reference charts. Now we've talked about these and how to read them before, but now we're going to look at them a little bit differently. So let's say you're at sea level and your uh, calibration for whatever it is, uh, let's make it something simple here so we can uh, kind of look at how this goes. So let's say uh, your base calibration here as at number 11. If you look over here on this side uh, and up along the top, you've got your cruise mode, your power mode, it will tell you the stage or the percentage of how lean it is. In this case, you're about 2% lean. If this is the base calibration, or excuse me, rich, and you are at 11 and that's 4%, richer then it's we'll call that halfway just for giggles and we'll say that it's about two percent richer than the base calibration on the cruise mode side if you go over here it's right out on the four percent line so we will say that it is four percent rich now let's talk about it elevation and we'll talk about some numbers here because that's where it gets a little more in well not confusing but we got to do a little bit of math here now denver we said is at 5280 that's the elevation now when you're trying to figure out where to go as far as how many stages of lean or rich that you need to make something in this case we're trying to lean it out as long as you're within a thousand foot i typically consider that okay thousand foot either way um, and under doesn't really make that big of a difference so we're gonna formulate it that way so if we remember here for every 1500 feet so that's going to be our reference and how many of 1500 will get us close to that so if we multiply that by three that'll get us to 4500 that gets us within the thousand that we were looking for now three times the two percent because we're going to use two percent uh, lean for every 1500 feet gives us six percent leaner. That's where we need to concentrate. So let's take a look back at the chart. If we're going to move to 6% lean, then let's take a look how it works here. So if we said our base calibration here was at 11, and we're going to try to drop that down 6% leaner, both directions here, cruise and power mode, let's move from the 11 down to this next line. That is 4%. Get something a little bit easier to point with here. That is 4%. So we'll call that 4. About halfway between the two lines is the 2. That'll get us to the 6%. So now we know we're going to operate right in the middle of that row. Okay. Now we've got to move 6% leaner this direction on the power mode. So let's move 2 to get back to this line here. Let's move another 4% to give us our 6. And the closest calibration to that is where we want to go. In this case, I would put us at the number 13. That's the calibration that I would move us to. From 11 to 13, that is your movement to get to that 6% lean. Now again, you're not going to, most of the time anyway, you're not going to get perfectly on that elevation number that you're at but it gets you close if you were to run that down at sea level it ran fine ran perfect good you had good uh, acceleration everything was perfect moving from there to there you will still have a very very good running carburetor it may not be perfect but for the amount of time that you're going to be there, it'll be just fine. And then when you move back to or get the car back down to where it should be, then you can go right back to your base calibration. That's how we read that. Now, let's talk about Santa Fe here. Grab another sheet of paper. 
Right. Okay, we said that that is uh, approximately 7,200 feet. Now, let's get as close to that. So 1,500 feet times 5 will get us to 7,500. Again, we're within 1,000. Perfect. That's about as dialed in as you're going to get. Okay, now 5 times the 2% lean that we want to be will give us 10% lean. That's where we want to move in that calibration if we were going to go to Santa Fe, New Mexico. So let's take a look back at the chart here. In this case, if you were here at 11, then what you need to do, and that's 4% rich and about 2% rich on the power mode, you're going to have to figure that out. Now again, I usually typically move that direction, one direction first, and that way I know which way we need to go. So we need to go leaner, so four, here's 4%, here is 8% on this line, and halfway in between it will get us to our 10%. Now we know we're here, now we need to figure 10% going leaner on the power mode. So 2% will get us to this line, four, here's 6%, and another four will get us to 10%. Now, again, this is where your calibration is, where do you go? In this case, I would go just up a little bit, and you're probably going to be just fine that giving up that 2%. Uh, it could make a difference, but in this case, I would probably go to 16. If you put it at 16 and the car was still is a little stumbly and growly, then go to 18. But again, you have to also factor timing into this as well, too. So one of those two calibrations will get you there. Now, if we remember talking about the calibration cart chart in past videos, when you have a calibration kit, all these black numbers are the combination of the stock rods and jets that are in the factory setup, and then all of these here are what are included in there. So every combination that you can make with a calibration kit and the stock carburetor is here. So you may or you're going to have to go buy some rods and jets if you don't have it. But that's the way to do it. That's how to read that chart. That's how to factor in where you need to be. And if you do that, I promise you that you will get that carburetor lean enough at those elevations then it should run okay. Now again, you've got all those other little factors in play, but if you do that, generally, rule of thumb, you should be okay. Now, let's go back to the secondary because all of this chart covers is the primary side of the carburetor. When you go to the secondary side, again, they give you the nice little tuning chart and the secondaries are a lot easier because there's no rod, it's only a jet. So stock calibration and then you move either way it'll get you to the 4, 6 or 13 percent. This is 6 or 12. In this case because what did we say at Santa Fe, or excuse me at Denver that we were going to move 6 percent lean? Perfect. Right on. Putting in that rear jet and it will be in that calibration that you get that you buy for that carburetor will get you to the 6 percent lean that you need there. When we go to Denver and it says we needed to be, or excuse me, go to Santa Fe, and we had to be 10% lean, this is 12%. Again, that small a percentage, I don't know that I would fight that too much. I would go ahead and put in that 12% uh, or two stages lean jet, and it'll be just fine for the secondary side of it. Now, all we're talking about here, like I said, is temporary adjustments. Again, in this case, a friend was driving from Denver to Santa Fe. That was a temporary adjustment. If you were driving from Oklahoma City and you're at 1,000 or 1,200 foot, I don't know what the elevation is there, and you were going to Denver or Santa Fe, then those are the adjustments or the math or how to do that process to find where you need to be on the tuning chart to make sure that when you get there, you're at least operating okay. It can start, drive, not, you know, buck and give you a, a, a lot of hard time but at least it'll give you some things to work with now popping the top of a carburetor putting a timing light on it and just making those small adjustments not that big of a deal if you're like i said if you're there for a car show or a long weekend or 
going up to see your mom, your grandmother, whatever, and you're just going to be there for a short period of time, easy. Uh, if you're going to be there long term, again, it would be a, the tuning process. You just need to take into account that things are going to be a little leaner as you do it. So just be cautious of that, I guess, and just understanding that you need a little bit more timing in those engines. You're going to lose a little bit of power. You're going to just need to factor in using a little less fuel because there's less oxygen in the air. Now we'll talk about barometric pressure and all of those other things. If you watch a, a really good sportsman or NHRA, uh, you know, types of racing, some of those guys will have a weather station out by their trailer. That's what they're doing. They're looking at so they can estimate how much fuel they're going to need based on the elevation. They already know what elevation they're at based on the barometric pressure. All of those have factors into it. We're not going to get that deep into it. We're just talking about tuning a very, very simple street carburetor, and it's not that necessary to go that far into the weeds. Now, one other thing here is if you have an AFR gauge, makes it very, very nice because then you can read the output going into the exhaust and know that those changes that you made were the right ones for that engine. And you'll be able to tell fairly quickly uh, if you haven't gone lean enough. So let's say you put that 16 in and as you're cruising down the road uh, or your wide open throttle, whatever it is, and your AFR is a little on the fat side, you know you need to take a little bit more fuel out of it and maybe moving down to that 18 will kind of sweeten that up a little bit. So anyway, just wanted to give, talk about that. It was a good topic. It was a good question that the gentleman had. And I just wanted to give you some of the basics in there because, hey, the nice thing about these modern day cars that we're in or muscle cars that we're in with a good transmission, you can dr drive pretty much anywhere. So drive it where you want to, have fun with it. Just be aware that uh, if you're on the carbureted side, you're going to have to make a little bit of adjustments. But for the fun of driving, it's not that big of a deal. If you got any questions on this, please don't hesitate. Leave them down below. I'd love to answer them for you. And I guess with that, we will catch you guys on the next video. We'll see you.